Today, we're diving into your questions from the community, starting with Alberto's post here. In P2, I'd like to have an automatic date equal the date that R2 cell has been updated the last time. So here we have column R, and when this updates, then Alberto would like to see column P updated as well. So let's jump into a new Google Sheet. Let's just go straight to column P. We'll leave the top for headers. Down here, we want to have this as a date anytime R is updated. So we're going to head over to P2 and type equals lambda. Now lambda is a very powerful function. It's pretty much the closest we can get to a real programming language within Google Sheets itself, not including app script. So we have lambda. We're going to start off with two different variables. The first variable is going to be now. Our second variable is going to be the cell R2. So let's just call it cell. Now we start off with a formula expression. So let's say if the length of the cell, that's saying as long as it's not zero, then return now. Otherwise, blank. Close a bracket, close a bracket, and that closes our lambda function. Now we need to open another bracket to say what is now and what is cell. Well, now is just now, and cell is going to be R2. Close bracket, press enter, and we get nothing because there's nothing in R2. Let's put the number eight, and that updates this with the current date and time. Now, Alberto only wanted the current date, so all we'll do is change this now to today. So now, anytime R2 is updated, then this cell will also be updated. I'm just going to change it back to now to show that this actually does work. We can copy this down. So when someone updates R3, we'll pop in the number two, and you can see this updates with the current date time, whereas this one is not affected at all. So there you go. Now you can keep track of when those changes are made. Next up, we've got this question coming in from Eddie. He wants to know what formula would return the last number in the row that's not a zero in S1. So here's S1 and he wants it to return a 26 because 26 is the last non-zero number. So here I've recreated Eddie's spreadsheet. We've got a list of numbers, we've got some zeros and the number 31. So we're looking to return the number 31. We're gonna start off with an equals index. We'll select the range that we want and then put a comma. Our row, well, we've only got one row here, so let's put the number one. And then which column are we using? Well, in this case, we're gonna to have to find the maximum column without a zero in it. So let's type out max and then if. If these are not equal to zero, we'll return the column numbers where that's true. In other words, where the numbers are not zero. We need to minus the first column just in case we start somewhere else and then add one so that we don't start from column zero. If the value is false, we could put a zero on the end. I'm actually going to end it with a one and we'll see why in a moment. Press enter and we get the number 31. Here, if we put in a new number, we get the number 45. 26, 8, and so on. Now, if this number here was a zero, then we still get the number eight, which is what we want because that's the last digit before we get to a final zero. But the reason that I put a one on the end is because if all of these are zero, then nothing is returned. But if that was a zero on the end, then everything is returned. So let's change that back to a one and we're all sorted. Now we have this last question coming in from Eric who wants to know what is the total amount that has been paid? Now we're gonna mix this up a little bit. So here I've recreated Eric's spreadsheet and we're gonna start off with the trick that we learned in the beginning of this video. So we'll start off with equals lambda. Let's use now and cell and then an if statement. Now in this case, it's a little bit different. If the cell is equal to the word paid, then return now. Otherwise, leave it blank. We'll put in two brackets and open a bracket. Our first variable, which is called now, is going to be the now function. Our second variable, which is the cell, is going to be C2. Close bracket, press enter, and we get an invalid function because I accidentally put the function now in, in here instead of the variable. Press enter, and we can copy that down. So now when this is changed from unpaid to paid, it automatically records the time that it was switched. I'm gonna leave it as unpaid for now, 
and let's work on the actual question. So here we have a bunch of $10. Now the total sum is $80, but we're not going to count these two because they have not been paid yet. And there's a few ways we could go about doing this. First, we could use a query function. By far one of my favorite functions, but the query will be all of this stuff here. And we're just going to be selecting the sum of E where C equals paid. Let's label the sum of E as blank and then press enter. There's our 60. Format that as a number and we're done. $60 has been paid. If we update this to paid, then we get our date in here and $70 total. Let's change it back to unpaid and let's see another formula that we could use. Let's just delete that one and let's use the sum if function. Our range is going to be this section here and we're going to be searching for if it says paid and the sum range is going to be our money. Press enter and again, as expected, we get $60. Now let's see one last way to do that and this one's a little bit more difficult. The sum product function, we're going to start off with a double negative which changes things to a binary operation. So we're only looking for trues and falses. We're going to open a bracket and select this section here is equal to paid. Close the bracket, put a comma, and then select this section here. Press enter, and again, we get $60. Now the sum if function is by far the easiest function. The sum product is one of the hardest ones to understand, and the query function is really good for those that are wanting to eventually get into data analytics because it does give you a bit of a head start in SQL language, even though it is Google's own version. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.